Okay, we have a really interesting integral. We've got the integral from zero to 23 of eight times the floor of x squared times two, the floor of sine pi x plus one dx. Okay, for this one, the first thing I wanna deal with is the floor function, and we have it in two places. This is gonna be interesting to me, but the floor here, this is kind of like the simpler case, but this isn't too bad over here either. And what I like to do for the floor function is I usually like to break up the bounds. So what I wanna do is break it up where the lower bound differs from the upper bound by one. So I wanna do it where we're gonna have like 24 integrals. The first one's gonna go from zero to one, and then like the second one's gonna go from one to two, et cetera. And when we do this, the floor is gonna have the effect of rounding us down to the lower integer. So like in this case here, for just the floor of x, it's gonna round us down to the lower bound zero. And really in all of these, it's gonna round down to the lower bound. So let's just write out some terms. So here we're gonna have eight, and then this rounded down is gonna become a zero. And so, and so of course this is gonna zero everything out, but let's just kind of go through it. Here, sine is zero, zero. So this is just gonna be like this expression. But like I said, this first one's zero, so we're not too worried about that one. But it, so then let's look at this second one. So again, we have our eight coming out in front. Here, the floor rounds us down to the lower bound of one, but we square it, so we have eight times one squared. Now here for this next part, we have to be a little bit more careful. We want to, what I want to do for this is let's just kind of look at our unit circle and think about pi. And the floor is really going to kind of simplify this quite a bit. So like in this, in this region between one and two, we're going to be looking, our input is actually going to be between like one pi and two pi. And so that's going to be down here in quadrants three and four. And so for all these values here, sine is going to be negative, right? It's going to be somewhere in here, but the floor is going to round us down to the next integer, and that's going to be minus one, because we're at minus one at this point right here. Because all these values here are going to be negative, but they're going to be integers between minus one and zero, the floor is going to round us down to minus one. So this here, we can put a minus one, and then we get this plus one dx. And then let's do one more just to get a sense of this. So then... For this one, we're going from two to three. We're gonna have eight. This rounds down to the lower bound two. So this is gonna become a two squared. Now here, if you plug in like these X values, we're gonna be going between two pi. So two pi is here to three pi. Three pi is gonna be like this. On the unit circle, three pi is gonna be the same as this point, the same as one pi. So this region between two pi and three pi, that's always gonna give us values in quadrant one and two. The sine values there are always going to be between 0 and 1. But for all these values between 0 and 1, the floor is going to round us down. It's going to round us down to 0. So for these, whenever we have this lower bound is even, we're going to end up with 0 here. And then we have this plus 1 on the end. And so, of course, we could keep going like this, right, where we go all the way to the last one, which is going to be 22 to 23. But this is going to just repeat because we're just going to go... When we have the odd case for the lower bound, we're gonna be in this region, it's gonna get rounded down to minus one. And then when we have the even case, we're gonna get rounded down to zero. So then what we can do with this is we can actually turn this into a sum, just noticing a few things that, first, just notice that no matter what we determine the value is of each of these, it's always gonna be a constant value, right? We can reduce this all the way down to a constant. So the integration is gonna be really simple. Like the integration, if we have this constant, we'll just call this C that we bring up front and we're integrating from some bounds n to n plus one, we're just integrating one. So when you do this, you have C times integrating this as X from n to n plus one. But when you evaluate this, you're just gonna get n plus one minus n, which is just one. And so you just get back the C. So because each of these integrals is just gonna reduce to one, I can just take all these constant values in each integral all the way to 23 and just sum all those up and that's gonna be our solution. So now just turning this into a sum, what I'm gonna do is for this lower bound, we'll kind of put a label, we'll call these lower bounds N. So for this sum, we're gonna do N starting at this one. We don't have to worry about this one because this one's just zero. So we start at this one for our lower bound. The first one's gonna be one. And for this last one, all the way over here somewhere, we're gonna be going from 22 to 23. So for this last case, our N value is 22. So this is gonna be our upper bound on the sum. And now for each of these integrals, just notice we have an eight in every one of them. And that, and that eight value is not changing, so I can just bring this outside of the sum and so we can write the eight in front like this. Then for this piece right here, this is gonna be the same thing as our lower bound. 
the n value. So I can write this here as just n squared. And then now for this part of the integral, we could write this all out like two times some value plus one, but I wanna make it a little simpler than that. What we really have is we have in this odd case, when our n is odd, this thing is two minus one minus two plus one. This is always gonna be minus one when n is odd. And then over here, when n is even, we have two times zero, so that goes away plus one. So when n is even, this is always one. So what you can do when you have this minus one, one case, odd, even, you can just write this as minus one to the n, just noticing when n is even, you get back a one. When n is odd, this thing is gonna be minus one. And so what we have here is just an alternating sum of squares. We can write out some terms, what this is gonna look like. We'll have our eight in front, of course. And then just like the first one's gonna be when you plug a one in, it's gonna be minus one. Then when this is two, plus four, minus nine, plus 16. And the last one, what's gonna happen? This is gonna to go to a positive 484 when we have 22 squared. And so all we need to do is we just need to find a nice way to sum all this up and then we can finish it off. Okay, so now just for this piece right here, you may recognize this. There is a formula for this and we could just go ahead and use it and finish it. But I think I wanna manipulate it to get it to a more familiar form. So what I can do with this is kind of just break it up like two terms at a time. So first focusing on this minus one plus four. We could write that, changing the order, I could write this as two squared minus one. Or actually I should say two squared minus one squared, because then if you break this up with difference of two squares, I can write this as two plus one times two minus one. This is one. And then what we have for our first two terms, changing the order back, two plus one, we can write it as one plus two. I'm doing the same thing here, 16 is four squared, minus nine is three squared, difference of two squares, four plus three times four, minus three, this is one. Four plus three, change the order back, and we have three plus four. And notice we could just keep going this way. We've got an even number of terms, right? Because the last one's 484, this is 22 squared. So this all works. This next term is gonna be five plus six, and then it's gonna go all the way to this last one, which is just gonna be 22. But now this thing here, we've rearranged it to just be the sum of natural numbers all the way to the first natural, the first, this is actually the first 22 natural numbers. And so we can just use the formula for this. The formula for the first k natural numbers is going to be just k times k plus 1 over 2, where our k value is going to be 22. So I'll just come down here for this plugging in. We're going to have 22 times k plus 1, 23 over 2. Cancel 2 with 22 here, and we get 11. 11 times 23 is 253. But let's not forget this eight that we have right here. And so putting it together for my final solution, eight times 253 is just equal to 2024. Okay, there you have it. Thanks again to Sid for another good problem. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.